All right, listen up, you ding dongs. This is Remake Rewind. No, I'm just kidding. That's <laughs> hey, everybody. Thank you for listening to Remake Rewind, the podcast where you decide if remakes or reboots should have happened. I'm Mike. With me, I've got my two co hosts. I've got Double D. How are you doing, Double D? What up, Mike? I'm doing pretty good, man. How does it feel to be back being named first? <laughs> uh, well, I, I feel like the world is right. Good, good. <laughs> and then we've got Alex back from Japan. How, how was Japan? It was buddy? great. I've learned phrases like kawaii. Kauai is an island in Hawaii. That's, that's Kauai. Wow. <laughs> that's what I heard. Kauai. You need to enunciate better. Kauai. What does that mean, Alex? It's uh, cute. It's like a, it's, yeah, it's a more intense version of cute. <laughs> Double D, why don't we let the man who just came back from Sorry, Japan I, I get really excited about it. Well, I mean, he's also been to Japan, pretty, so... <laughs> Japan. Yeah, but Japan I asked great. you about your trip, and Double D is just like, oh, I'm first in the uh, co-host again, so I'm going to fucking take over. I got excited, Mike. I'm sorry. I'll shut up. <laughs> but no, what Double D said. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite place that you visited? What was, what was the coolest thing you saw? Uh, well, my... <laughs> <laughs> um, it's definitely the Godzilla statue. <laughs> that was... That was pretty neat. Uh, did you go to Toho Studios or what? Uh, we were outside of there. We didn't get to see it. The, they have like a Godzilla statue right there. And then if you go to Shibuya, they also have like a giant Godzilla just peeking through the building. So it's... it's that's it's rad. Great. <laughs> yeah, that's rad. All right. Well, uh, I'm not here to talk about your vacation. Oh, damn it. You sure? But Japan's we are talking about a movie. <laughs> two movies about a visitor to an island, not oh. unlike Tokyo. Except but, it's very different than Tokyo. <laughs> very unlike Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we uh we covered the. I guess they're technically horror films, but I don't really know. But you know, we're gonna call them that for now. Uh, we watched. What the fuck did we just watch? The Wicker Man. The Wicker Man. I totally forgot the name for a split <laughs> second. <laughs> you know, have you seen either of these movies? I have seen the newer one. I've never seen the original. Um, actually, when I was watching the newer one for this, I was like, have I ever seen this? And I couldn't remember. And then the first, well, one of the first scenes in the movie where uh, Nicolas Cage picks up that doll off the ground and on the road, I was like, oh, shit, I've seen this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you've never seen the original? I had never seen the original. What about you, Alex? Uh, same. Like I've seen the new one. I-, I was the dick in the friends group where I was like, "Oh, guys, you gotta watch Wicker Man because how bad it is." And I would show it to everyone, <laughs> and now I just hate it. Like I can't, I can't watch it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I um, so I worked at the movie theater when Wicker Man came out, and it wasn't one of the movies that I watched for my breaks or anything. But my dad really wanted to see it. And so I took him to see, and he really liked it. And I remember enjoying, but I was like 2006, so I was 16, 17 at the time when the movie came out. So I I thought the ending was hilarious <laughs> for the wrong reasons. And we'll talk about that movie later. But I didn't even realize there was a remake until like, a, or that it was a remake until like a year or two ago. I had no idea. So this is, you know, I'm kind of glad that, you know, th- this is one of the reasons why I'm glad that I, I started a podcast was specifically, there were a lot of movies that I've watched that I wouldn't have watched if I didn't, you know, do this. So, yeah, it was, you know, I took this as an opportunity <laughs> to watch a movie I haven't seen before. But these movies are both weird, and I, I, I think it's just time to talk about them. I agree with your assessment. <laughs> yep. So uh, he's gonna <laughs> synopsize the first. I'll go, movie. I'll go for the first one. The Wicker Man in 1973. Sergeant Neil Howie arrives on a Scottish island looking for a missing teenage girl, Rowan Morrison. The place belongs to Lord Summer's Isle and is famous because of their plantation of apples and other fruits in their harvest. Sergeant Howie realizes that the locals are pagans, practicing old rituals, and Rowan is probably alive and being prepared to be sacrificed. The end of the story is a tragic surprise. Thank you, Claudio Carvalho. (laughs) So, this movie was... I I did not know that it was going to be as weird as it is. So, it turns out, like, this is a huge, like, staple of the genre. Like, people love this movie. This is supposed to be, like, the Citizen citizen Kane. Of horror, horror. yeah. I mean, I wouldn't go that far. But it's supposed to... It's up there. It's, you know, like, the Dark Knight. 
you know, a movie like that. Like, a, it's supposed to be considered, you know, one of the best movies of all time, at least in the horror film genre. But I, I expected to go it to go, you know, just be like this suspenseful movie, and I didn't expect a borderline musical. <laughs> <laughs> there were a lot of un, uh, well, not unwanted, but weirdly placed musical scenes <laughs> so like the music the be so this movie was filmed in the hebrides um it's not supposed to be i don't know if it's supposed to be like a scottish isle but it's you know an island off of the scottish region and it you know it, it has some celtic pagan stuff like it said in the synopsis but it's there's so much weird music like it has like this opening crawl of like and you know the airplane flying over the the ocean and it has like this weird, Celt- I guess it's supposed to be Celtic music, but like one of the, like the first song is like, once I had a hundred sheep, <laughs> kind of shit. <laughs> and then that song ends, and then it's still flying and getting ready. And then there's a new song that come. They play this song probably every five minutes in the movie. It's like, corn rigs and bonnie rigs. Corn rigs are barley. <laughs> like. And like that song, it starts just kind of slow and melodic, but then there's points where it gets faster. And there's no rhyme or reason to when they play the song in the movie. Like, there could be a dramatic part, and it could be like, corn rigs and body rigs and barley is corn, or whatever it is. It's so weird. And then, did you guys catch what the opening line of the, uh, the movie was? It just made me laugh. No, I think no, it's... It? So, it's just, such, it's not even a funny line. It's just, there are only two movies that I've heard of that use this word. And, like, it's a pretty common word in the nautical realm, but dingy. So, the first line of the movie is, Will you send a dinghy, please? Did you hear me? I would like a dinghy, if you please. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, since it just made me laugh because the only other movie I've heard the word dinghy in is um, Tommy Boy, and they're like, quit playing with your dinghy. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's out on the boat. But I, I don't know, I just laughed because it's just that really crappy music, and then the first line of the movie going being, will you send a dinghy, please? It just made me laugh. Sometimes you just need a dinghy, Mac. <laughs> Sometimes you just need a dinghy. I mean, he did need the dinghy because he parked his boat like 20 well, yards from the dock. That was his last dinghy ever. No, he got on the dinghy again later. <laughs> so that dinghy, you were just going to say ding- dinghy a lot. <laughs> the, it's, you know, just a rowboat. Had a, it was like painted a blue and purple and it had like an eye on it. That That wasn't made for the movie. When they got to the island, they saw that and they're like, we're going to use that for the movie. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, that's an odd coincidence. And apparently that that dinghy lasted until just a few years ago. Like, there was a big storm in, like, 2016 that destroyed it. Destroyed the dinghy? <laughs> destroyed the dinghy. The dinghy got destroyed. <laughs> that poor dinghy. That dinghy got dented and dinged and then destroyed. Oh, that was a real reliable dinghy. <laughs> Alliteration aside, let's move on. <laughs> um... <laughs> So getting to back to the music in this, like, so not only does it have that weird music throughout the movie, there's a, like, a naked music video. It's basically like a music video. Like, this woman <laughs> sings an entire song naked. Oh, yeah. Through the wall. Through the wall. And then there's, like, a Maypole scene that's, like, a good another, like, three, four minute song. <laughs> you can definitely find that Maypole scene on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> And then there's another scene later on where they're like another naked music video, basically in like a st- Stonehenge style kind of. <laughs> yeah, they're just jumping over the place. bonfire. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking weird. This music and a ton of nudity. I didn't expect all the nudity in this. It's movie. very gratuitous. Wait, yeah. I, so I I only could only find the final cut version. Did did yours have like a random orgy scene in? In the oh, beginning, yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. Was it like yep. it was like weird slow motion? Yeah, it's right? weird slow motion, and then you just like yeah. So the direct, so the American version that's currently out on DVD and like Shutter, which is where I watched it, um, is is the director's cut, but it's not a true director's cut because apparently there's like a five minute monologue from uh, Christopher Lee that's cut out of it. So it's the director's cut but doesn't have a um speech from the theatrical cut that the director did want but for some reason they took out still so it's not a true director's cut so what would you call it would you call it a, a dinghy cut <laughs> the ding the dingy ding <laughs> cut <laughs> i don't know bro i don't either so what are, what are some highlights for you guys for the movie like what stood out to you guys the uh, gratuitous news. <laughs> <laughs> What's the weirdest? 
like <laughs> all the people they showed in this movie were actually very very attractive like sometimes when you have like gratuitous nudity they just get like the cheapest actress they can find <laughs> but like they and they got like talented people like these people could all sing and dance <laughs> and be naked well they had that one girl that apparently dated peter sellers for a bit the one, oh really i was like seducing him <laughs> behind the wall willow. that was so weird <laughs> so yeah that was willow the innkeeper's daughter yeah. there was another song i didn't bring up there was a song at the bar that everybody sang about banging the landlord's daughter <laughs> <laughs> oh my god got this song. and now granted it makes sense because these guys are these these islanders are all pagan and they're all about fertility so of course they're going to be banging you know, that's only natural. But there's yeah. also a woman who's like naked straddling a oh, tombstone. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't leave them out. <laughs> you can't leave them out. What? what? <laughs> Everybody's got to get them, I would think. Well, no, it wasn't a sexual thing. It's because, like, that's how they worship their dead. They ex- Christopher Lee explains it later on, Summer Isle. God, they're not doing necrophilia. What the fuck, Double D? Well, maybe he's not. Maybe he's like a demon or something. I don't know, man. Paganism. Paganism. So Who that's am something. I to so judge? Let's, let's just do a little bit of education. So please do. Um, so paganism isn't like demons and shit. Like it's just the non-Christian language or religions from that region before you know they brought Christianity over. It's like Game of Thrones, and right? <laughs> <you're>, right. <laughs> it's the older gods. <laughs> But even if you look at like Christmas is a is a very pagan holiday and it's based off a pagan holiday. And a lot of times what they do is they'll take days that are famous from other religions when a new religion takes over and then just move holidays around. So make it easier for those people. Same thing with Easter. Easter was a uh, fertility festival, basically. And then we rebranded it to be Easter Christmas. Christmas's origin used to be it was based off pagan stuff and then it went around being actually being very mischievous and then it changed to what it's currently like now so you know paganism isn't all isn't demons and devils and stuff it's typically worshiping nature not not the devil and I think um Christopher Lee said something like that like Christianity do- talks more about demons than paganism does same thing like everyone thinks a lot of the christians think like halloween is you know a demonic thing and it is based off a pagan thing but pagans don't worship the devil now there are people there are offsets that you know worship like bahamut and stuff like that but you know so what you're saying is paganism is just really just accommodating it's just a well no it, it's just the older <laughs> way christianity everyone. changed to basically when they took over so christianity was fairly new when paganism was still you know, ramp it in the, you know, in Ireland, the Celtic religions, Scotland, England. And then so when they brought the, when the Romans brought Christianity over, they just changed, like, so like Jesus wasn't born in December. People think he was actually born closer to like August, September, but they celebrated Christmas because there was already a holiday. So it's a lot easier for them to embrace the holiday, their, their religion, if they have holidays that match. So yeah, it's, you know, a little brief not very accurate history lesson for you guys. Well, thank you, Mike. <laughs> you're, you're I appreciate it, little buddy. So I'll take that back home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I guess we should actually start talking about the movie. So when this, it's very confusing. It's it's set up to be this whole mystery. So uh, Howie gets to the island and he immediately starts asking people about this missing girl, Rowan Mor- Morrison. And everyone's like, never seen her here before. You should check, like, the mainland. And he mentions, like, well, her mother is is May Morrison. They're like, oh, yeah, she runs the post office. Gets to the, it's, it's not a post office. It was like a candy shop. With toads. Yeah, it was really weird. <laughs> and so he shows her the photo. It's just a, it's just and a gift shop. And she's like, that's not my daughter. My daughter's over here. She's, like, nine years old. That girl's, like, 13, 14. And so... At that point, most people would be like, most cops would just be like, what the fuck is going on? Maybe I should leave and figure out, like, what the letter is. But he decides to stay and investigate. <laughs> and so then he, you know, he goes to the bar, the town inn, and everyone, like, cuts the music when he walks in. And he tells everybody he's going to find this girl. And then, like, he just goes through and does a bunch of investigations. Like, he shows up in a classroom and barges in on a lesson and gets mad at them for teaching little girls about sex and stuff. And then he found out that 
when people they're liars that they're liars when people <laughs> die we'll, we'll dive into some of these scenes in a little bit more detail but he ends up finding out that the girl died and and this religion that they have they don't ever say die they say they don't exist anymore so then he finds so out that strange. she's not actually dead and he thinks that he finds out that they're pagans and he thinks that he's going to sacrifice they're going to sacrifice her and then you know we'll, that's basically the plot until we get to the you know the the famous ending but there's a lot of weird shit that happens between the beginning oh, of the movie it's like every five minutes right like people down. lying saying that they don't exist saying that that's not her daughter oh they, first they say that it, that's not her daughter in the yeah. photo and then they say she didn't exist and that it's, it's fucking weird i actually weird. do like the classroom scene like i thought that was handled really well where he's like uh-huh. What's this <laughs> empty desk right there? <laughs> I, I, love, I love how they, they, you, he just erased the board and wrote right. his name on there. Just Both like of the, them do yeah. that. The new one yeah. and the remake. <laughs> <laughs> just, like, about that <laughs> scene, kind of and I that. guess back in like the olden days that they might not have extra desks, but I've definitely been in, you know, when I was in younger, like kindergarten and first grade, when they keep smaller classrooms, we might have one or two extra desks in a classroom. Right not in the, in the middle, middle. but in the middle right. though but that's really Mike. dumb <laughs> no but it's still like why would they do that um but yeah it was where they were keeping like a beetle on that desk yeah yeah, yeah it was tied on the yeah. string string um but yeah and then he calls so them that, all liars so he's like you're <laughs> so he tells great. the teacher liars he's like you're liars <laughs> and you're liars you're the biggest liars of them all and you're the <laughs> biggest the little girls yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Oh. <laughs> the uh, the little parade thing towards the end. Yes, yeah, so this one was interesting. Weird. So they actually go into the the rituals quite a bit. So like he ultimately meets Summer. Like every time he goes to do something, they're like, "Did you get permission from Mister Summers?" And he's like, "I'm a police officer. I don't have to do that." Like the first <laughs> like time where he really kind of like tries to exert some c controls in that classroom scene he's like i need to see the attendance logs she's like no and he's like i'm gonna do it anyway and he like shoves the teacher <laughs> out of the way and takes her book and they just have rowan's name just crossed off in like the middle of the page that's so dumb she doesn't exist <laughs> <laughs> gonna cross her off she doesn't exist and then like so he, this scene the this scene made me laugh a little bit so like when he finds out that she died um he's like how can you say she doesn't exist i just found her in the book i have evidence that she existed like you're covering up both versions of the movie the teacher is the person who's supposed to be reasonable <clears throat> um, the teacher's supposed to be reasonable and she basically explains they're not dead and he goes oh so she's buried in a churchyard and he goes well i wouldn't call it a churchyard and they argue over the word semantic like the semantic of the word <laughs> churchyard because she's like well it's not a churchyard if nobody goes to church there anymore and he goes but we built it for christ and it's, and it's like He's very ham fisted with his like religiousness. Yeah, with his Christianity. Like he like even like wipes off the wooden crates and like makes a cross in there. Yeah, yeah that's pretty <laughs> like fucked up just to like diss somebody else's religion and be like, fuck this. They have like their own little like spiritual wooden things on this thing and he just crashes <laughs> them and makes a cross. <laughs> and then it's Christianity is a strong <laughs> religion. <laughs> And then it ended up being a uh, uh, hair that was buried in there. Oh yeah. Um, but like the whole scene when he f he actually realizes that they're pagans, like he finally sees Christopher Lee as um, Summer Isle, and he's asking to, for permission to exhume the body. And then he just starts saying like all the stuff they do, and he he basically tells them about like sacrificing and how the harvest works and how they're pagans, and you know he explains that. It, the how he gets pissed he's like why are those women dancing naked and they're like well they're jumping over fire you can't do that while you're wearing clothes <laughs> fair reasoning fair right. reasoning um <laughs> but it's just it's, it's such a weird dynamic in the movie and then like he goes to the library and he reads this thing and they um like you said that the parade they do this like thing that was really weird where <laughs> Oh, super weird with the sword so like, that's actually a thing that sword thing so if you ever um you guys are in the bay area you guys should check it out so every year in oakland the the scottish rite puts on a like a christmas kind of play and what they do is they write a brand new play every year and bring brand new costumes and brand new sets every year 
and they base it off of like a different country's different Christmas belief beliefs or, you know, a holiday around Christmas. And because it's the Scottish Rite, which is kind of like a Masonic thing, they actually every year they do work in the sword dance. So there's actually a dance that they do before they actually join the swords together and put the uh, make it look like that Star of David. But they you can actually see that um, at the Scottish Rite, whatever, in Oakland. They do a different Christmas story every year. It's pretty cool. But you can actually see them do that dance. Just check it out. It's it's, it's actually really cool. It's it's really great. I'll actually put a link. Do, do, they, really cool, do Mike? they also cut off heads? No. But they didn't really cut off a head. And then, yeah, it so, made it seem like it. And then they all laughed right. at it. All <laughs> the awkwardly. thing that's weird about this... Okay, so basically the ending of this movie, he finally realizes that the girl's alive and they're going to sacrifice her so he starts like searching the houses like one by one illegally i might add but he starts searching all the houses and he starts seeing like weird stuff like he sees a gr- like a super hot okay. woman naked in a bathtub uh, uh i'm pretty sure yeah <laughs> that she was doing something else yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um and then he like he finds like that one girl that was just pretending to be dead yeah, in the closet like she's like <laughs> has like bl- fake blood on her it's really weird. <laughs> weird. Oh, man. Like, there's two dolls that are, like, put in a sexual position as well that he, like, knocks oh, yeah. over. He knocks them over. <laughs> oh, man. And then he also sees, like, a dead old woman missing a hand. And then later on, like, that hand was used in the ritual. Like, he knocks over a candle with a hand holding it. That was supposed to, like, make him fall asleep or something? Yeah. yeah I think that's what they were talking yeah, so, about. Yeah. yeah, I don't really know what the hell is going on. So then, ultimately... <laughs> <clears throat> he puts he like knocks out the innkeeper and puts on the, the innkeeper's like weird fool costume and so they set it up where i guess if you're paying attention you could have guessed what was going to happen so they say that when there's a bad year of crops they need to have a human sacrifice and then it has to be one of four things so there's like the fool the horseman the king and i can't remember the other one so he dresses as a fool and then they go and it looks like they're going to sacrifice uh, Rowan and then he just runs up and like punches a dude in the face and takes her (laughs) and then she lures him to a trap and basically they're like oh you're the sacrifice and they explain they need a virgin they need someone as a king and him being a cop he has the power of the the government so he's like a king and he and he had to come there on his own and because he followed the girl there it's technically coming on his own so they end up like beating the shit out of him and putting him up in a giant wicker man and burn him to so death. So if I feel like the king It is, but I mean it's open to interpretation. And then he even tries to be like if this doesn't work, they're going to have to kill you next time Summer Isle. Yeah. Because Ooh, in the procession t- that's how it would go. <laughs> yeah. I I I feel yeah, like I really, for for a sacrifice ahead. though, wouldn't it be more meaningful if it's like the people themselves were being sacrificed. I mean, like you're <laughs> picking some get a king, some man. random stranger to right. sacrifice. I feel like and that's he, not really. He tries to explain <laughs> that he's like, I don't believe in your religion, so it doesn't mean anything. Like he he makes that argument, and like I I get it, but also a lot of the times, you know, I'm sure nobody, not too many people, really want to be a sacrifice, and their religion. Like, <laughs> the thing that I questioned was, how did they find him? Like, how did they decide on him? Like, they had to... Yeah, the letter was directed to him right. specifically, yeah. right? And so, yeah, how did they, like, how did they know that how... this man existed who was a virgin? Because, like... How did they know he wasn't going to sleep with Willow? Well, I think the point was <laughs> that if if he did try to, Willow, because they're looking for a sacrifice, want to do it, maybe? So what you're I, saying is if he had sex, he'd still he'd be alive. He'd still be alive. Well, I think they were testing him, and the fact that he turned down Willow, who's supposed to be one of the most attractive people on the island, and don't get me wrong, she was very attractive. Very attractive, very attractive. Agreed. Very attractive. Agreed. <laughs> if he did try to bang her, they would be like, oh, well, maybe he's not a virgin, or he wanted, or she wouldn't have actually done it. I don't know. I don't, I don't really know. So you're saying the moral of the story is... <laughs> Just well, no, he was engaged to be married, okay? It might but she save even your life. Like, when, when he says he's engaged to be married, she's like, oh, that's going to stop you? And he, then he, he explains that he's old-fashioned and everything. Um, but how did, how did that seduction work? Because 
There's no way he could have <laughs> done that. Through the wall? Naked. It's the best. It was so powers. she's like naked on the other side of the wall and she's just like singing, like tapping on the wall. And then eventually she's like she was dancing like, and gyrating like, and gyrating and thrusting. And, like sucking back in her powers. Ass. What's funny is like so at one point, like when that scene was going on, I went to Katrina because Katrina loves like Celtic stuff and Scottish stuff and um she does the Renfrew. Like, she really likes that kind of, like, culture and history. Um, and some of her favorite movies, like The the Secret of Ronanish, which is, like, on an Irish island. So I'm like, honey, you might like this movie. It's right up your alley. Uh, it's got a bunch of nudity, and it's got, like, the Hebrides. Like, she really wants to visit them. So she started watching. She watched maybe 15 minutes with me, and she's like, this movie's too fucking weird. And just left. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, how did he know she was naked? He just felt her. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, she was channeling the succubus. Oh, man. <laughs> so it, it, even in the more the next word, she's like, "Oh, I thought you were gonna visit me." She's like, <laughs> so "I invited great. you." <laughs> it's so great. Oh, it's so weird. <laughs> but you know, what's crazy about this movie, like Could've Christopher Lee, who's one of the you know he's one of the best like horror genre like weird evil man actors out there. He he did this movie for free and he says it's his favorite role that he ever did or he said it obviously he's not around anymore i i did but hear that yes it's such a weird movie and it's just like <laughs> it was hard for me to take it seriously just because of all the weird music breaks <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i i find it charming because of that <laughs> fucking like kids are like around the trees and singing that weird song i just I I find it like endearing. It's just endearing. I don't know. I did like. I don't know. Yeah, I, don't know. I did like. Oh. I definitely. I definitely was more on board with this movie right. than the remake. And we'll talk about though. the remake in a few minutes. I think we're going to wrap this one up pretty soon. But I did like how the whole town was in on it, where they were in their weird masks, and they would like pop up, and they would see him like they uh, they did, like they broke his airplane, and so he, like he looks over, and they all pop their heads down. And then he starts working oh, yeah. on the, the airplane, and then they pop their heads up in their weird, creepy mask. I gotta say, those masks were way creepy. What's yeah. weird is, or not what's weird, what's funny is, you know, they actually built that giant Wicker Man. They actually did burn the Wicker Man for the movie. But when they were filming the scene while cool. he's in it, the goat actually pissed on him just before they started filming. Because it had, like, <laughs> it wasn't just him in it. It had, like, cows and geese and whatnot <clears throat> in it. But yeah, it's a really fucked up movie. Yeah, I mean, it definitely held my attention, though. Uh, it it just had so many weird parts consecutively. I think my mind the was just first to half wrap hour it all just had way too many musical constantly. numbers. Like the first half hour was just like it seems like more like a musical than a movie. But yeah, it was pretty solid. I, I definitely think it's it's musical. more of a black comedy than a, I, I can a see that. I, I can see that. Like. The, God, it's so weird. And Christopher Lee dresses up as a woman at the end. <laughs> it's so weird. His hair was great. It was great. His hair, man. Those are so, right any, anything else you guys want to touch upon on this one, or are you guys good to go? The iconic, the iconic head falling yeah. off the wicker. I did like <laughs> the whole time, like he's in there burning. He's just like, I am a Christian. I believe in the life of turtles, promised by the Lord Jesus <laughs> yeah. Christ. Oh, he said some songs. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He said some stuff. And um, I just don't understand how they found him. I wish they explained that. <laughs> I, I want to know if the crops. <laughs> <are> <laughs> I was actually I curious about that. I was like, "Is there going to be like a, a months later, and we're going to see like Lord Summer?" <laughs> in yeah, the I, <laughs> I, I, I made a huge mistake. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we should just get into the second one. Uh, Alex, you got that synopsis? Yeah. All right. This is from Anonymous. <laughs> you always Anonymous. pick the ones from Amnam. I can't even say that. What you say? Anonymous. 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 Hip hop anonymous. A sheriff investigating a disappearance. Wrong. Of he a wasn't young a girl. sheriff. <laughs> a disappearance of a young girl from a small <laughs> island discovers there's a large mystery to solve among the island's secretive neo pagan community. He's he's not a sheriff though. He was like CHB. <laughs> and he was like Nick a nobody. Cage. Edward Malis. 
No, so you know what, how they came up with the name Malus? Not even. He was like a California police. Yeah, he was a California. Which makes it even, oh, yeah, California. Which makes it even which more great. Yeah. yeah, well, that's the thing that's funny is throughout the movie when he's on the island <laughs> and people, are, he's like, I'm a cop. They're like, you're a California cop. We're in Washington. <laughs> This is Washington. Like, yeah. I know. They're like, uh, okay, then. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> his name Dreddy. Malice came from because of the the sexual nature of fertility in the Maypole and the the dichot- So, there's a major difference with this one, where that like the island they go to is a matriarchal society. So, yeah, to so kind of do the opposite of that, his name means literally means male phallus. So malice, uh, phallic symbol, phallic right. symbol. <laughs> so the thing about this movie Dumb. is it did not do well. It's con- dingy. <laughs> There's no dingies in this one, as far as it I didn't have tell. a dingy. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing that's weird about this movie is the acting style. Of course, like this movie is a meme. Obviously, the B scene scene is a meme, which I didn't have the B scene in this version. Which no, is weird, and it. I looked into it, and like some articles that I read said that they had it removed. Some articles said that it's only on the unrated version, but I know I've seen it, and I've seen this movie twice before this time. So I saw it in the theaters with my dad. My dad really liked it. I know we rented it, but we never. My parents never rent would rent or watch unrated versions of things. So I feel like they just edited out that version because people made fun of it so much. <laughs> well. Uh, th- it wasn't just the B scene they took out. Like they took out the B scene, but they also took out like. But well, that was all one thing. Yeah, yeah I mean, that was I one scene they, originally. I think they could have edited it, but they took. It, it was really but just like they still had the voiceover scenes, where yeah. you heard the beat. Or you heard yeah, you heard, you heard that, and you hear him say, like, "My legs, broken. you're my legs." <laughs> you didn't you broke my legs. Just the next scene. <laughs> 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 my legs. <laughs> oh shit! Nick Cage is here. <laughs> but this movie so this movie is weird because apparently has 80 percent of the dialogue is line for line but they move some stuff (laughs) around but the stuff they add is really fucking bonkers like the the stuff they change in the movie is really weird it doesn't make sense so like i said the first major change is the island is in the pacific northwest and it's a matriarchal society so like none of the men on that island talk or anything like that. The other thing, don't they like some of them? Have it their seems yeah, like most of them do. I feel the other thing that's weird yeah. about this is like they give us a little bit more of his backstory, but his backstory comes into play, but it's super unnecessary. <laughs> so the beginning of the movie opens up with him like his him being his little California Highway Patrol, and he like pulls <laughs> over this this family because this girl threw out a little doll out from the car. And so he pulls her over, gives it to her. She throws it out again. And when he goes to pick it up, like a big rig just destroys that car. <laughs> but it was the same big rig that drove the other uh, way, wasn't it? Maybe. But the thing that's yeah. weird is that weird. comes back like throughout it. the entire movie. So he comes at one point, he's on like a ferry going to the island. And um, I guess a ferry's just a giant dinghy. <laughs> <laughs> just, just another dinghy. <laughs> um, but he sees like the little girl on the ferry and then a big rig destroying killing her on the ferry on the <laughs> and he sees her throughout the movie and it's like i don't get it like what does that add to his character other than making him like fucking weird like it didn't add anything <laughs> was to the that movie not, uh, was that not rowan that he was seeing there i feel like that it, was it later changed into rowan it did that's so later seems, on it yeah. replaced rowan at certain points because he didn't know i don't i don't fucking know but it still it didn't make any sense like it did, that he would be hallucinating this girl i guess the only thing that you could say would be but they, if they explicitly said it maybe it would make a little bit more sense but maybe they did it because he feels responsible for that girl dying at the beginning of the movie because he did try to like break the glass, but she was just being super creepy and just like stared at him sort of crawling. Just the being glass. weird. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but, I think you're right. It's supposed to be his motivation why he goes out to, to because his ex. the whole reason he goes the same thing. He gets personally he gets a letter, but he gets a letter from his ex fiance saying her daughter went missing, and that's kind of the hook. And I guess you can say 
you know, one, obviously he wants to go because he didn't have closure with the fiance, but also because he wants to make up for the girl that he didn't save. The girl and the mom he didn't save. So now he has another mom and girl that he can save. Right. And like, <laughs> this one they try to set out, but like he really, he isn't even a detective. Like when he's, nice. he's at home <laughs> being a little bitch six months after this girl died <laughs> and hit like a woman comes and is like, hey, you should go for the detective thing it's like you if he's taking that much time off they would not let him even be like test for the detective first off i don't know <laughs> so he ultimately ends up on the island and like has a similar start where he you know he gets there and he shows the photo and they're like i don't know that girl all the, and it's women who are answering like there's two men just standing there holding a sack that's dripping blood and he's like what is that a shark <laughs> That's great. Did, did they ever show no, they don't. No, the bag? They don't. <laughs> they yeah. don't. He just gets like scared when I he looks like inside it. of it. But like, why is that your reaction? Yeah, a shark. <laughs> Why is that your go-to <laughs> animal? <laughs> because it's well, that's the thing. It's like, and I don't know if that was ad-libbed or what. And you know, part of the reason why this movie got a cult classic following is because of the really shitty acting. And retroactively, Nicolas Cage said Amazing. he did it on purpose, and it was a black comedy. But then a few years ago, he's like, no, this is just a bad movie. <laughs> and the thing is, like, Nicolas yeah, Cage used to be it, a good dude. actor. Like, he can be a good actor. And there's, there's moments in this movie where he's good, but there are other times where he's just really fucking weird. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's weird. It's not even, like, bad. It's just Honestly, I prefer Nick Cage's <laughs> performance than the other people's performance. The other guy was boring in the previous one. I, I do yeah. agree. Like there, this is there. There's things that this movie did better. I think I can't remember what it was, but I remember watching it. There was something that I thought was better. <laughs> but he just goes to the island and he's just like a dick from the beginning. Like he, he walks <laughs> into the hotel or like the inn, and they're like, <laughs> he kills a bee, and he's like a dick about it. Like why would you do that? Like clearly it was a big deal. Sorry, and he just like raps on the things like this is official police business. Dude, what was it? What did he do that with? He, with the the mead? Did he just carry around? No, a no, gavel? no, no, was, no, no, no. That was for the bee. But when he made his announcement, he had like a he pulled something oh. out of his pocket it was like and a, like yeah, it's like, like small like a pocket wooden knife thing. or something. Maybe. But yeah, he just like bangs the counter. Wow. He's like, I'm here on a official business. <laughs> I'm gonna talk to each and every one of you at some point. <laughs> so great but what i feel like it's like it's him being macho because like he's like oh i need me before i go upstairs to talk to my ex and he looks up he sees his ex and he's like all right bang, bang, bang. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> it was what this lily sobieski was in this movie and like i remember seeing her in, like deep impact and this and everyone thought she was gonna be this huge star but then she did that ua ball film um with uh jason statham the, uh, the yeah, king or the, whatever it's called it? Du dungeons or something yeah like that dungeons. movie and it's yeah. based nothing off the the video game um <laughs> same thing like he ends up going to the school and it's the same basic thing like he walks in there's no maypole scene but they go what does the maypole represent and they're like phallic symbol or <laughs> <laughs> yeah and what do men represent phallic symbol phallic symbol phallic <laughs> symbol so <laughs> And then, like, they have a de like a crow in the desk. The same thing pulls out. Yeah, we wanted to see how like, long Like, why the last? hell would you let her do a sick thing like that? <laughs> uh, it's so it's so weird. And then they end up, um, while he's investigating, he goes to, like, the dock to wait for the uh, pilot because he needs to use her ra his radio. And then he looks under the water and sees what he thinks is a body. So then he... <laughs> you see him dive into the water freaks out and then it turns out he's yeah. he was sleeping and so it's a dream like he wakes up and he's like oh god damn and then he like what and the then he's like he, he looks down and he's holding a dead body and he's like yeah he yeah, wakes yeah. up again it's like oh god damn it's a dream. <laughs> yeah that's it's a dream within a dream <laughs> so, so great inception <laughs> stole from this movie <laughs> can we just talk about the uh the yeah. pilot for a little bit. <laughs> like, he, he fucking is like, no, I respect their privacy, blah, blah, blah. But he gives them all yeah. the bucks and he fucking right. But I like how he does it. He's like, uh, will you take all of us? He's like, all? Yeah. <laughs> Grant and his yeah. twin brother, Ulysses. <laughs> right. <laughs> so then when he lands, immediately the people on the island are like, we're going to have to have a conversation with him. And the next time we see him, he, 
He's dead. He's got his yeah. eyes and his like tongue ripped out and his mouth sewn shut. Sewn shut. And his hand cut off. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it had like straws or something yeah. coming out of them. <laughs> that was gnarly. That was weird. <laughs> um, but it's the same thing that like if she existed, you know, we would know. It's like I said, it's basically the same thing, but with these weird other things cut in. He does get stung by a bee at some point, and that's how he ends up at Summer Isle's house, who of course is the woman in this one, and they mentioned that they treated him in the old ways. I love that. And he just stares at her. <laughs> 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 and she's like, well, what matters is that it worked. <laughs> right. But she's right. I'll give her that. And so then there's a... So what? what Taganism, you idiot. <laughs> Yeah, but what exactly? I want to know. Mike. Go I study the paganism. <laughs> oh. So, I thought I was an expert. Now that you right. Told me. <laughs> so once, then there's like another scene where he like hears somebody crying, and so he like goes into like this crypt, and he ends up in this like underwater tunnel with oh, a yeah. Jesus statue in there. <laughs> and then he he like spends the night in that tunnel because somebody locks him in there. <laughs> I don't. Know. I do like. Then the last like twenty minutes of this oh, movie is just. Well, you know, and then and then he the his ex saves him, and that's when he that that infamous scene comes out like, where he's like he how gets the get dog. Like, how did it get burned? What what ruined it for me is there's a meme going around where it's like it shows Nicolas Cage holding a plate of toast, asking her how to get burned. <laughs> so as soon as that scene came up, I started laughing. So, so the two scenes that became memes for this movie. Was that scene, and then of course the bees. They're in my eyes. <laughs> they're in my mouth. Um, but it's so he ultimately like tells his like ex fiance like she at that point she's like, I need your help because like she's your daughter, giving him another reason to like stay on the island and you know investigate. So he ends up doing the same thing where he's just like busting down houses, like he's literally kicking in doors looking at places and then at one point someone was like you don't have the authority to do it you need her miss summer Isle's permission he's like i don't need permission and if anybody gets my way i'm gonna charge them with uh murder and i'm gonna arrest them myself to murder, right? but i'll give you my permission to stay the fuck out of my way <laughs> 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 which is weird. so like this movie is pg-13 so that was the one fuck but originally it was gonna be rated r and they filmed apparently filmed a bunch of like super disturbing scenes and then decided they wanted PG-13 and cut it out. But they must have known this movie was going to be bad That's... because they refused to screen it for critics. <laughs> so the last 20 minutes of this movie are bananas. So he, like, he ends up like at one point when he goes to get his costume, he ends up being in a bear costume this time. But when he gets it, um, <laughs> when he sees... <laughs> he, he, yeah, so, so he mentions to somebody he's like, oh, to his ex, he's like, I need to go confront Miss Beach. And then he goes and it's like she he walks into a room and they both just kind of mean mug each other and then he just decks her and then he just goes around and he decks like four women like he's just like <laughs> at one point he pulls a gun on um Miss Rose on the bike he's like step away from the be vehicle <laughs> yeah it was just a bicycle, bicycle. <laughs> take your stupid mask <laughs> yeah. Take yeah, so she had a chrome mask. He literally just throws it at her. And says, Take your stupid mask. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Step away from the bike. <laughs> but then, yeah, he's just like punching women throughout the whole. Um... Even when he's in the bear costume, yeah. they're like, "Oh, Sister Beach, what's wrong?" Pat, <laughs> something wrong. Well, <laughs> the, when he fights Lily Subieski, which at one point she's like, "When you leave the island, take me with you," and so she oh, yeah. goes to fight him, yeah. and like he like keeps punching her in the face, and you can tell like those punches are nowhere near. Yeah, he kicks. Too? He's like, "God damn it!" And he kicks her. <laughs> he kicks her. And he, like, punches her. <laughs> Hey, dude, he kicks a bunch of people in this when he was fighting. Yeah, so he, like, but with her, she, he like, like cunt punts her. Like he kicks her like right in the crotch and she flies into the wall. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, <laughs> it's so stupid. And then at the end, it's the same thing. Like it looks like they're gonna sacrifice the girl, and then he runs and just punches another woman. And then like <laughs> they go through like wrong. one path, Punch. and she's like, he's like, hey, wait for me. And then like they just randomly end up on this hill 
next to like the entire village and then so the entire village swarms him he's just like punching people and throwing kicks and <laughs> how, how could he not keep up know. with his chat? Oh, at one point he tries <laughs> oh, to yeah. he, he, <laughs> Rowan, slow down, Rowan. <laughs> yeah, at one point he tries to recruit all the men and they just like stare at him. Yeah. And then yeah, and then <laughs> so it disappoints me because I know I've seen that scene before, but yeah, they end up like <laughs> ganging up on him and they like he he's kicking people, punching him, and then they um you just hear cracks, he breaks his legs, and the same thing, you're killing me for nothing. It's not gonna <laughs> matter. It's not gonna bring your crops back. I don't believe And then it had this whole like prologue or epilogue six months later <laughs> oh, i guess before i do that we like we explain that so basically they explain what i liked about this is they explain how they picked him because it to me it doesn't make sense like how they came across howie but in this they say they send the hot women to go <laughs> bang people just in case they need a human sacrifice because it has in their version it has to be a stranger but that stranger has to have a connection to the island so they just send their the hot child. their hot women out to go bang people so that way they can yeah. have a sacrifice just in case <laughs> and that cuts to 6 months later and it has Jason Ritter and James um Franco <laughs> and you have the ex and <laughs> when you leave here what will you take yeah, me with you Lily Subieski <laughs> <laughs> yep yeah, so. that's so fucked up. <laughs> so, like, that, that's the thing. Like, I like that aspect of the movie. Like, I thought that was better. Yeah, I thought that was the only thing that was better that they actually explained I think this movie him, was a little... But... Cr- Dude, I don't... Like, I think, like, the mystery element of this seemed like... I think maybe having Nicolas Cage being so intense added to... Like, I think it added to the suspense a little bit and having, like the weird bro <laughs> coming at him and stuff like that dude this movie felt so it's, long it's really it's a rough watch like if it wasn't for nick watch? cage rough watch. Rough. Rough. <laughs> oh, man, i just giggled that was really bad Oh man, that would have been great when they pull off the mask. It's like rut row. It's just stupid mask. Mask rut row. Those tab kids. <laughs> we'll go to kind of work with it too. <laughs> Meddling kids. <laughs> like, oh, you're saying Alex was a rough watch. <laughs> I hate you guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it was it was uh, it was hard. It was hard. Yeah, dude, I, was, I texted you guys in the middle of me watching it, like, oh my yeah, god, and then I was like, the so last boring. twenty minutes <laughs> rip, and you're like, well, I'm like ten minutes away from the, the ten minutes. The last twenty minutes of this movie are very watchable. Yeah, I could watch. So the just thing that is, so I mentioned fine. earlier, I liked this movie for the wrong. So at sixteen, seventeen years old, I thought it was hilarious that it was just punching people and then it was when i'm like it's like it was so shocking because you don't see women getting hit by men in movies so i was just like holy shit nicholas cage i don't know the thing about that is i think if they re-release not re-release but if they made this movie today with the whole like matriarchal society i bet people would find it scarier because unfortunately we live like with the whole me too movement and you know time's up and who's next like, people really are afraid, and I mean, you know, it's a long time coming. Like, we shouldn't be, we just should, like, men should be nice and not rape people. But a lot of men are terrified of women right now, so I feel like this movie would do a lot better if it came out now. If it wasn't as boring. I didn't think I it was that boring. That I don't think, I don't know, I didn't think it was boring just because Nicolas Cage being so over the top. Dude, I just had so much trouble paying attention. <laughs> yeah, I could well, especially like after watching the original one, like God, the original just, one was easy to find. This movie was really hard to find. I found it pretty. Well, you're rich and you have family that has Cinemax. <laughs> I'm not rich. My family. Whatever, is man. Rich. You should be rich at this point. You live in <laughs> San Francisco, basically rent free. It's not rent free, said, but it is very cheap for San it's Francisco. It's it's very cheap. It's it's cheap for the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> you bastard. I'll take it. Anyway, <laughs> um, so to do this, I already used my free trial for like Cinemax on Fire Stick, so I had to go, and I've already used my my uh, trial for PlayStation View, <laughs> so I had to go through and create a new profile on my PlayStation 
to be able to do PlayStation View again to watch this damn movie. Well, now you got 30 days or something. It's five days. <laughs> oh, yeah, really? Yeah, so I'm going to have trash. to cancel it and like soon because it, it's like $50 a month. Oh, damn. But yeah, this movie was very hard to find. If that didn't work, there's like a secondhand movie store down the road from my house. I was going to drive over there and like unfortunately buy this movie because we try to like – you know, watch all these movies legally for this podcast because we're good people and we appreciate the arts. But it was very yes. hard to find this movie. Well, I'll tell you right now on IMDb, it's a 3.7 out of 10. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not a be good why. movie. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of times when the movies don't do well, you can get the rights for them cheaper. It's surprising. That's true. But if no one wants to watch it, you're I not going to pay for it. I mean, all the good scenes are on YouTube, anyways. Right. So. <laughs> this is true, <laughs> dude. I, I watched the B scene on YouTube, and it was some shitty voiceover. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> all right. Well, I guess it's time to you know answer the question: Did this need to be made, or did the did the original need a remake or a reboot? No. no. I think it needed to be modernized. I I don't know <laughs> if this. Movie with, I don't know if this was the right. This one, wasn't though. the right one, but I definitely if they think remake it again. I think they can do much better. I, I think they can too. And this movie did enough to try to make things different. And what's weird about it is, I mean, the script is eighty percent the same as the original. They tried to get the original guy who played Howie back and Christopher Lee, and they both turned it down. And the guy who played the lead in the original one, Howie, he said um, it, the script was actually pretty good. They just fucking didn't make a good movie well so if if you were to remake it mike mm -hmm. would you remake it like the old story with like all the orgies and cult stuff i think you would have to i think that i think that thing. made i think that makes it a little bit more uncomfortable and like have all the same mystery stuff and have like the darkness of the new one but also have the weird sex stuff kind of like um da vinci code <laughs> I think you remake it like the first one and have Guy Pierce as the cop. Guy Pierce. <laughs> Guy, I can see that. I think that would be great. Yeah, I, 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 I think you that. could do that. And I think I think the problem is just people are get freaked out by pagan stuff because they don't understand it, which I talked about earlier. But um, I don't know. I, I think there's a good movie in this. I just this wasn't the right move. I, I definitely can see why they remade it. You know, it'd been 30 years and it's the premise is interesting. I mean, it has a, you know, pretty good twist in it. And I like how they updated it and it made more sense how they connected to connected it to the lead. So yeah. there's things that it That's did. Right. It's just the acting wasn't very good in this movie. <laughs> no, it was terrible. <laughs> right. So what do, what do you think? Good old intense Nicholas Cage. Well, I, I guess you, I already know how you guys feel. Cause Alex said it's a rough, a uh, 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 rough, rough rush. Rush. <laughs> <laughs> um okay other than that thank you guys for listening you guys can check out everything that's mdx pods related at mdxpods.com twitter and instagram and facebook at mdx pods listen to our other podcast uh ruin my childhood and uh, we are on youtube links for everything in the description below or if you're on youtube uh links for everything else is in the youtube description so thank you guys for listening and uh uh, that's it. Dingy. <laughs> Dings. Dingy, 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 <laughs> rough watch. Rough watch. Night, guys. Bye. I hate you all. <laughs>